a good uh, to ask the Minister for Health if he will inter um, initiate an immediate public inquiry into the government and Neffet's handling of COVID-19, including an immediate investigation into the nursing home deaths. I will commit to an independent external audit of Netflix's advice and the modelling by an external uh, set of auditors who are not otherwise engaged with the state in any way. Um, if we can explain and justify Ireland's position as an outline of Europe in relation to the level of restrictions and hospitality and antigen test testing, we will make a statement on the matter, please. Thank you, Larry. And Hara. I thank the Deputy for the question. It's fair to say that COVID-19 has had a devastating effect and caused huge difficulties for everyone in Ireland. It's especially true for people in nursing homes, for their families, uh, and indeed for uh, the staff, but particularly for those in the nursing homes and their families who have suffered huge hardship. The Department of Health is exploring ways to ensure their voices are heard. It must be recognised that the pandemic has not yet concluded, and at this time the priority focus of government remains on the ongoing man management of the COVID-19 response to ensure that the gains we've experienced are preserved and that those most vulnerable to the virus continue to be protected. The National Public Health Emergency Team and the modelling team have served as well and perform essential roles, and I'd like to pay tribute to the chairs of both groups, Dr Tony Houlihan and Professor Philip Nolan, for their leadership uh, and their expertise. I believe Ireland's response has been robust, and this is evident when you look at uh, some of the outcomes for Ireland in, uh, in, in relation to a lot of other countries. We have one of the lowest number of cases uh, per capita within the EU and the UK, uh, and thankfully, uh, when this is over, uh, if things continue as is, we, we will have one of the lowest levels of excess mortality as well. Our vaccination program is performing uh, extremely well. By the end of the week, the vaccination program is expected to have, have administered uh, 5 million doses, with over 2 million adults fully vaccinated and over 70% of the adult population having received their first, first dose. Uh, and I'm delighted to be able to share that when you look at the target populations, Ireland has either the highest or one of the highest participation rates right across uh, the board. The deputy raises, I think, the very important point of antigen testing as well. In January, I established the rapid testing group chaired by Professor Mark Ferguson, and more recently, uh, I've established an expert advisory group on rapid testing chaired by Professor Mary Horgan to support the rollout of rapid testing uh, right across sectors uh, in the country. Thank you. Gormahag, at the outset I want to come in and thank the frontline staff and nursing staff and, and their attendants. Uh, um, the independent investigation I want should include a cost benefit analysis of the government's um, imposed lockdowns to date. For instance, the overall costs and indeed the delayed diagnosis and misdiagnosis and the of the lockdowns uh, to mental health and other health related services together with the economic and community in impact versus the benefits uh, derived from the biggest uh, the longest ever lockdown uh, in Ireland. Um, Ireland has the longest lockdown in the world, Minister, and second highest rate of nursing home deaths, which is so sad. One death of one is too, one too many in any, any, in any um, situation, but in the nursing homes. Of these deaths, we know that 50% of deaths were, got the infection in, in 575 nursing home uh, uh, buildings, and 15% of, of the deaths were infect, got the infections in 86 hospital buildings. And that's what I'm coming at, Minister. People go into those uh, trusted institutions for care and protection and the hospital to get better, not to pick up an infection. So we need a thorough investigation, external, independent, to uh, find out where the mistakes were made and ca can we be ready in future to You're rise ready? up like this. On Tara. Thank you very much, Deputy. And I think where the Deputy and I, uh, it sounds like we agree, is that everything that can be done to protect people in the nursing homes and indeed right across the residential sector has to be done. One of the things which the Deputy will be aware uh, that was done was an expert uh, nursing home group uh, was brought together. They did a huge amount of work and they produced uh, a very, very comprehensive uh, report. An implementation group critically was put together because Minister Butler and I uh, wanted to make sure that this was not just a report that sat on a, sh sat on a shelf. An awful lot of work has been done. HICWA uh, have been very, very involved. The HSC has been involved. As the Deputy, I'm sure, is aware, the Defence Forces at times were brought in to help out as well. Um, and uh, Minister Butler and I will be bringing forward uh, shortly really quite groundbreaking regulation, uh, uh, legislation in terms of the regulation of the nursing home sector and indeed home care more generally. And I would, I would share the Deputy's view that everything that can be done must be done uh, for people in, uh, in the nursing home sector. And, and, and I would add to that and say uh, home care Minister. as well. Yeah, 
but minister, look, it means that around 40% of the, of the five, uh, a number of 5,000 approximately uh, deaths in Ireland occurred in nursing homes. Uh, th that's 40% of them. Uh, internationally, the Republic of Ireland has the second worst rate of nursing home deaths uh, in the world after Canada. After Canada. As society uh, returns to normal, we hope, there must be, uh, this issue must be addressed. And the very least for the fa many families who have lost loved ones in the, in the most tra traumatic of circumstances uh, over the past 15 months must get answers. I know there's a number of cases and court cases coming up and challenging. And I've spoken and met nursing home staff. I haven't been in there. I've been in one or two at it by invitation. And they were forced, literally, they were left without, you know, a PP. They were left without oxygen in some cases, taken away by the HSE, is their allegations. And that is shocking. So we must examine this fully. And I don't want an internal investigation. We have to have an external, uh, inward-looking investigation that has no uh, commitments to any sectors in Ireland, only open, honest, transparent, and find out. Can we learn from the uh, huge mistakes, the lack of readiness and preparedness for any kind of a pandemic, and learn from the mistakes? Bring it every on look. Uh, we, we absolutely have to learn um, from what happened. Some things were done well, and, and undoubtedly there will have been mistakes made. Um, I'd like to assure the deputy, though, that, that that constant review has been ongoing for a very long time. So Minister Butler and I have had numerous meetings with the, with the department, with the HSC, with HICWA, to be able to go through nursing home by nursing home around the country, uh, identifying those nursing homes who are most at, mo most at risk. Uh, HICWA, in the first uh, in the first instance, deputy, how, how it works is HICWA does a very thorough examination right across the sector. Uh, they then uh, identify specific uh, challenges that individual nursing homes may have, and they engage with the HSC uh, and the department to make sure that the supports are, are put in place. So uh, while I, I, I hear clearly what the deputy uh, is asking, I would just like to uh, assure him, and indeed people uh, who are in the nursing home sector uh, and their families, that, that this will, would not be something new. We, we have been constantly reviewing and revising and learning uh, and, and putting more and more safeguards in place right the way through this pandemic. Kermogath.